So, could you tell us your name? Uh, my name is Dave Huffman. Mm -hmm. And did you grow up uh, in Portsmouth? I grew up here in Portsmouth. Uh, I've been here most of my life, except for the times that I was in college. So, I, you know, this is home to me. Now, um, you had a really wonderful job for a while that I think would be so much fun. Would you want to tell us just a little bit about working there? Working as librarian in the mm -hmm. Portsmouth City Schools, um, it was it was great. I had thirty great years in the school system. Uh, I was a product of the school system, so I from kindergarten through twelfth grade, and then uh, it was an honor to come back and, and uh, be hired and work for thirty years in the in the school system. And I uh, I do miss the kids. I uh, don't miss the hectic schedule, but I do miss the kids, the interaction with the kids. So uh, and that, that's that's the only thing that I miss. But uh, I still have uh, an active part in the in the city schools. I do uh, work in the school archives, which I started back around 2000, 2001, and uh, I did get permission from the superintendent to continue even after my retirement. And uh, you know, I'm working on some projects, a couple projects right now for the schools. And, and uh, doing something for the uh, Bicentennial Committee, working on a, a project there, working in conjunction with them. So. so you went to school at Portsmouth and then ended up teaching there. That's great. Yes, yes. Now, did you go to school when all the elementary schools were different? I started out at Wilson Elementary in kindergarten and went through sixth grade there, and then uh, Grant Junior High from 7th, 8th, and 9th grade, and then uh, PHS from uh, 9th grade through 12th. And uh, I, I tell people, I said, uh, I was born on, I was born a hilltopper, but raised a river rat. So uh, that was, it's kind of, it's kind of humorous for those that lived in the area from the hilltoppers and, and the river rats. So. <laughs> and there was always, a, there was always competition between the two middle schools, or junior high schools, between Grant and McKinley, so it was always very competitive. So, <laughs> so did, the, um, did the schools get consolidated while you were teaching? Yes, they did. Uh, of course, uh, Grant was moved over to uh, PHS when, when they raised Grant, and uh, uh, I was, uh, I, well, my career started out at Portsmouth High School, and then uh, I moved to uh, Portsmouth East High School up in Soderville. Had had about nine to ten years of, of uh, work there, but it's fabulous, fabulous school. And uh, then when uh, our levy passed and then they closed uh, East High School, I came back down to McKinley for about six years until we moved into our new facilities, which we were very grateful for. It was an exciting time. That when the bond levy was passed and people got involved and you know and new schools and uh, so but it was uh, it was a good transition now as a librarian it was a it was a huge tran trans transition because of you know uh, Gail Hopkins the other librarian had a couple libraries and I had the three elementary bringing them into one we had to be very organized when we did that but it worked out you know like clockwork did um did you see, what did you think when they consolidated in? Was that, did you see a change in how the kids viewed school or did they not care in the school? The kids seemed to, to uh, accept the change pretty well. I think they were just as excited as the adults. Uh, but it was, it was, you know, for a couple years, it was uh, trying to get things to work smoothly, your schedules, your buses, your pickups, things like that. Uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was an adjusting time. Uh, but then once we got settled in the building and settled into schedules and, and uh, but it was it was it was kind of challenging for, for parents because you know we would switch things around but then uh, you know it settled down pretty much yeah. and did you I'm trying to work out the years here did you teach in the old high school before they built the new one also yes I did yes I was from P, I was a PHS library in PHS from 1985 to 1992, so um, we had uh, some good years there. Uh, then I moved to Portsmouth East for about 10 years, and then moved back down here when they closed it. So. Um, what um, is there anything in particular that 
uh, stands out as the being the librarian of that experience? Was there anything that you just really loved about it or didn't? <laughs> well, the one thing is I got to see all the kids, and that was what was really neat. At the high school level, some kids would come in only when they were, would have to do some work. But uh, as I moved back down to the elementary, then I, I got to see every student. And of course I had, some, I had good support staff with good library aides and we had a, a well-established program we knew. We worked together real well. And then of course we saw tons of kids all the time, you know, from the first thing in the morning till the end of the day. So, but it was, it was, it was exciting because we got, that's, that was what I really liked, was just to see the kids and work with them. so than in the county schools, and maybe I'm wrong about that, but did you see the community be involved with the schools? Did that come with the new schools, or did it come before? I think there, there's always been a community involvement. Uh, I think we saw it more when we moved into our new facilities. A lot of volunteer uh, in, the air, in, the, in the building, uh, in different areas. Uh, PTO, you know, the parents were very supportive of the kids and, and they and the teachers working together in the PTO uh, that's where I saw a lot and I always tried to be involved in you know these see what's going on and then share with PTO what was happening in the library and, and uh, so it was that, that was good but yeah there was a lot of uh, a lot of organized programs where, where parents and, uh, and community members would come in and volunteer uh, at one point, we had uh, some volunteers coming in and reading to the kids in the library. So that worked out real well. And then we had, uh, for the kids, we had uh, a book club uh, for a couple of years where we got some of the kids. It was after school mall uh, where kids that would come into the, the uh, book club after school. And then we, we tried to get in some community people, uh, local authors, you know, just to expose our kids to some of the local people that, that have... Uh, written and uh, made some things known to the, to the public. Well, speaking of uh, your book club and starting into books, I know you have, um, you've written your own. Would you like to tell us a little bit about all of that? Well, it was, it, not just me, there was, there was three of us that, that uh, worked together on this project. Uh, Jim Deddy, myself, and uh, Linda Arthurs Jennings. Uh, we first met on the Portsmouth Facebook page and just uh, communicating with them on that page, uh, I felt something clicked to where you know we really loved our local history. And uh, at one point, the three of us did get together um, before the book was written. We got together because the Portsmouth Times approached us and uh, wanted to do a section in the paper that had to deal with history in our area. And uh, we met with Mike Meserly and. Uh, he had said he wanted to establish something like we had before. There was a segment called Those Were the Days, and, and they would highlight a lot of Carl Ackerman uh, collection pictures. Um, of course, we didn't want to do, we didn't want to infringe on that, which was well done in the past. We wanted to start something new, so uh, Mike suggested that we uh, come together and maybe have a segment in the life section of the Sunday paper having to do with uh, some of our uh, posts of pictures past of Portsmouth. So it was about three years ago we started this segment for the Times. Uh, so Linda, Jim, and myself would take turns and we are the ones, the major ones I guess, that would that submit the articles to the Portsmouth Times with the posts. Uh, we would do all the work for the Times and we tried to, you know, tried to do it professionally and do our best, you know, for, you know, making sure Everything was done right, but each month we send in a the the month of uh, segments that would be uh, posted in the live section. So we we continue that, and uh, I asked Ryan Otney. I said, Ryan, I said, uh, I know this is a lot of work on our part, but I said, do you still do you have you still get people saying they really like it? And he said, Oh, Dave. He said we get calls every week 
saying, uh, you know, they want to be a part of that, they want to join the group, and uh, he, he said, yeah, keep it going, because the people are really like this segment. And uh, so we, we continue it, and we, we, do, it, we do enjoy it, because we want to share, uh, and it, it brings back memories to local people, and then new people in the community, they, you know, it gives them a little vision of what uh, Portsmouth used to be, and uh, we, and the three of us, Jim, Linda, and I, we really st still think there's a lot of positive in Portsmouth. And uh, sometimes we, people seem to focus on the negative, but we like to turn that around. With this segment of the paper, we like to be positive and just kind of jar some of those people's memories and remembering, you know, oh, that, I remember that. So there are some things in the paper that, you know, the people just really can relate to with some of the posts that we put in there. And then I just started a, um, another, a segment um, with the Soda Voice. Uh, we just started, I had my first uh, column uh, in the paper this last month, and I have talked to Debbie Allard, uh, the publisher, and uh, right now I'm just going to submit one article a month. And the, the column's called uh, from the Portsmouth City School Archives with Dave Huffman. And it's just some of the things that I've researched over the years that I'll just want to share with people. Uh, so I've got, a, I've got a couple that I'm working on now for June and uh, July. But I'm kind of excited about that. I, I am not a writer, but I just like to share. And so uh, this is something where I can share with the people in the community about Portsmouth City Schools. Now I know um, the, the title of the book that the three of you finished is just called Portsmouth um, a Postcard History or? Yes, uh, this was something that uh, the three of us knew we were wanting to do something and then Jim Deddy had the idea. He was the one to spearhead this project and that's when he, he asked Linda and I you know, to come on board with him and of course we said yeah let's, let's do it. And uh, it is a, it's a postcard history of the Portsmouth area. And so we, we put our postcard collections together and then we borrowed some from other people. Um, there was Paul O'Neill and uh, the Glockner collection. Um, he, had, uh, he had many, many postcards in that collection. And uh, so we were able to borrow some of those we have about nine chapters, there's nine chapters in the book, and we uh, talk about different areas, those postcards were selected for each chapter. And then the work that we did was the research behind each one of the postcards. And then we uh, tried to be as accurately as possible, historically, and, and trying to you know, just share the pe with people what we've accomplished in, in, cere in our research. Uh, so we, we had worked on this for about eight to nine months and uh, Arcadia Publishing really worked well with us because this is the first time we've really published something this, this intense, I think we call it, but uh, it, it's, it's very, very well done. And when we first received our copy, we, just, we were just amazed at how it turned out. And, uh, but our, our reward is that people are enjoying it. We were wondering where we stood with the publisher, how well it was going. And the publisher had told us, it said, within the first year, if you sell a thousand books within the first year, then it's a good book. And the first three months, we sold 1,200. And we just couldn't believe it. But uh, we just, uh, you know, of course, there was other historians before us. And here, we just wanted to share with the community and just continue the history because we, we noticed that we hadn't had any kind of a local history book for years. So now when, we, when this came out, we, just, we were just glad to add to the contribution of the community uh, with this book. But it's been, it's been well received and uh, well liked and we, we hear compliments uh, continually about the book. Grandmother sent me back after a second copy. <laughs> oh, she did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, um, so, how did uh, you typically work on this? Did everybody have an assignment, or did you all get together? We got together. We worked uh, each week. We ended up uh, at my house. We have a big uh, 
table, and uh, we just, you know, we, what we would do is, is uh, work together, kind of give each other our, our homework assignment for the next week, and we would, uh, we would work during the week and then meet each week. Uh, and then, of course, we, if we uh, ran into some questions, we would email or call each other uh, just to make sure we were on the right track and we were doing the correct thing. Uh, Jim more or less, more or less had uh, was kind of like the leader here, kind of directing us, and we would we would work with him. And uh, because I know he he was really excited about this, he was kind of nervous. We were all kind of nervous because we thought, you know, are we doing this right? You know, and but the publisher was very worked with us very well, so we really did uh, we really did uh, have a good publisher. So had, none of you had published anything before? This is everyone's first try? Yes, uh, book-wise. Now, I had, in the past, worked on a school archives calendar for Portsmouth City School in 2008, 2009, and then 2010. Uh, I did work with a different uh, printing company, but uh, just worked on that. Uh, was just through the, through the school system. But uh, at, with a book publisher, this is the first time for all three of us. And you said you, how did you acquire, you said postcards from yourselves. Where do you acquire those? Well, we, each one of us had basically uh, collected them over the years. Uh, we get on eBay, buy them on eBay. Uh, yard sales, uh, and then if uh, friends knew we collected them, then they, uh, there was different people over the years would, you know, I'm going to give that to so and so, or give it to Jim, or you know, give it to Dave. Or, you know. We've had friends, and, and it's just something that we've had a knack for about local history. Now, I haven't got it, I'll be honest, I haven't got a chance to read through it yet, but um, did you notice um, any kind of theme or any sort of relationship between the different cards that you researched? No, I think what we had to do when we were trying to divide the cards up, we had like nine chapters, and we wanted to make sure that each chapter had, you know, was had enough uh, postcards in them. And then, if we lacked, then we went to uh, Paul O'Neill's collection or, or uh, Glockner's collection. But and then we would just, you know, try to fit some in and make sure we had a, a, enough for that chapter. But it it, it worked out pretty good. Put you on the spot. Do you have plans for a, a second book or? <laughs> I don't know. That's what we all kind of like. Well, you know, we're uh, this one is still popular and they're still being sold, and, and we get people coming up, you know, week or two every couple of weeks asking, you know, where, you know, can I have, get a copy? And and of course, we as authors have, have some on hand, but then there's a number of them uh, locally. Don't want to like cut you short. Is there anything else about the experience, or just Portsmouth in general that you wanted to make sure you got to talk about? Nope. I think uh, that's all, folks. <laughs> Sometimes I, I don't know if I've asked everything, and yeah, people click off when they say, "Oh, you didn't." Okay. Sorry. Well, <laughs> I can't think of anything else. I think it was. Now, how will that be put on on the? We're gonna put it on. Um, we're gonna put it on our YouTube channel, and it'll also be. It'll have a link through our website, and um, you can get to it through that way. Right now, we're just kind of collecting all of the the raw interviews. You know, we don't. Okay. We edit off the beginning and the end. Like they'll they'll cut this off because nobody cares about me talking. Right. <laughs> so. <Me too. laughs> so he'll just cut off like the beginning. We were talking, and the end we were talking, and it'll. Okay. Um, and then one of these days, uh, we've, we're starting to get a pretty good collection. We'd like to do, put them, formulate them into something. Mm -hmm. We just don't know exactly how to do it or what to do with it yet. But um, you know, I'm having fun collecting all of oh, these. I'll bet. So yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got to do some cool ones. But um, <laughs> oh, they're so fun. Who are but, some that you've? you've oh, uh, some of my favorites. Um, Wanda Cave. 
she was one of the first ones that I got to talk to. She was, um, she's the aunt of the, the, there was a lady that uh, died in the 1937 flood, the one lady that died. She's Rest the aunt on. of the little girl, so oh. it was sisters. Okay. And so I got to talk to her oh, and, um, and um, Alberta, I got to talk, we got to talk yes. to her and um, Oh, she's still living. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, we got to talk to you. Oh, we did for the 20th anniversary of the prison riot. Uh, we tracked down a couple of the, one of the guards, and his name escapes me right now, but he was one of the hostages. Right. And uh, not Jeff. Like okay, there was three or four. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I asked almost all of them and only one of them, and which is completely understandable. Yeah. Only Jeff. one of them was comfortable talking about it. And Jeff had to, he couldn't go back to work. Mm -hmm. He took disability and yeah. I had him was I had him as a student back at VHS. And he was mm -hmm. a big football tough big guy. Dude. Man that just that, you know, and I could understand, you know, mm -hmm. something like that is so traumatic. Oh absolutely. Oh my god. I, absolutely. Life changing. No life changing. Kidding. But yeah, we um I tried to track down and I asked most of them. And, and only one was able to, and I kind of completely understand that. And he's actually still working as a guard. Wow. Isn't that wild? I would that be. Is. I've been gone the next day. Yeah. So it's just been, we've got to do some really, really wonderful ones. So. Good, good. I like well, that. That's great. That's good. Well, I thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. And I think we've got a copy. You do? In our a signed team. copy? Mm, I think and so. And then, uh, I don't know if you want to put this with it or not, but this is uh, one of the, one of the mm -hmm. residents said, she gave us, that was one of our first reviews, comments, and I thought, Ooh. I thought, I, we were really impressed. It blew our minds when, when she had he made that positive comment about it. About Very us. cool. I thought, uh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yes, well, that, that we're not, we're not, we make a little bit off of this, not much. I mean, we're not going to get rich on this, but that wasn't our purpose mm -hmm. either. Right. We wanted to, to do something that was lasting after we're gone, mm -hmm. you know, Definitely. the Lord tarries, you know, <laughs> something right. that, and then uh, I was, somebody had made the thought, you know, kids in high schools need to know the history of our. And you know we're, we're we're teaching to the test, right? And but I I haven't done this yet, but I'd like to talk to one of the history teachers and maybe come in during their senior year mm -hmm. and just speak maybe a couple of times at the beginning yeah. of the year at the end or just a couple of days in a row or something about our local history, particularly the city schools because mm -hmm. we got fantastic yeah. rich heritage in, yeah. in the city schools. There's special stuff going on over there. There really is. I'm always, every time I go over, I'm really impressed with them. Yeah. But there's always some, you know, we, there was always something happening. And that was good. And, and like I said on the camera, that we do have a lot of volunteers that come in. Uh, just this, this, this past year, I volunteered for the Reeds More program. You know, and I was there every one, one day a week for two hours, and I had four different kids. I had the same kids every week, so there was some consistency there, and, and I tried to encourage them. Of course, they come up like, well, why did you leave? You know, why did you retire? You know, why aren't you in the library anymore? <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to explain to a third grader, you know, I put my time in and I want to do some things differently, some different things, and, and uh, it, it's, it's hard. Plus, you know, we were glad to get Jenny Dutton because, you know, with the library background she has, and I was hoping that I would be filled, my position would be filled with a, just a sub, you know, without any experience. So I was glad that they got Jenny in there. Uh, that was great. So, and then her background being here, and I thought there's a little bit more of connection to where maybe she, you know, will want to do some things in the future. Of course, this first year for her was just getting getting grounded. And in fact, I talked to her this morning. She had a couple questions about inventory and I got back with her and I was talking to her and, and uh, got some things answered for her. And I just said, congratulations on your first year. I said, it was a pleasure to 
introduce you to the library and kind of give you a walkthrough before I left. So that worked out real well. Of course, you know, I hear from people, well, she's doing this, she's doing that. And I said, she's okay. not a Mr. Huffman. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I said, if she does something, I said, I'm not going to criticize her. I said, she's going to do some things because she's a younger person, she's different, and she's going to do some things differently over, the, over, over her course of being a librarian there. I said, they're not going to be like me. I said, you know, just be glad you had me, and now be glad you got Miss Dutton, because I said, she's going to increase your horizons even more, and in a different way than what I would have thought of. So I try to encourage the kids, that, okay, now, you know, it makes me feel good that they miss me, but I said, okay, you got somebody different, support them, listen to them, just be good. You know, you continue to be good readers. And there was a lot more, I think, a lot more AR readers this year than last year, and I thought, yeah, good, because the library, and of course, we always supported the uh, classroom teachers, and I know Jenny did an excellent job. So One of the coolest things I got to do this year is we did a, a writing contest about why it was important for people to read. And uh, we did it with the kiddos through the library. Good. And oh, we had a ball with oh, it. So. I bet you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think we get some beautiful library. That's one thing when when we uh, transitioned to our buildings, the architects worked with the staff because they asked for our input. You know, usually they tell us what to do, but. <laughs> They ask us, you know, how, you know, how would you like to design your library? How would you like to design your music room? You know, and they try. You had certain parameters and, and so on. My big thing was, I want a reading pit. I want a huge reading pit. And um, the one architect said, well, "We'll work on that." You know, a month later, he come back and said, "Oh, got some bad news and some good news. Bad news is your library is on the second floor." <laughs> so I thought, "Oh no, there goes my pit." But he said, I got an idea. Risers. It worked out perfect. It worked out perfect. But I did get a reading pit up at East Portsmouth Elementary. So it's, it's of course, a smaller school, but uh, it worked out just great. You know, the kids love that. So I thought, you know, there's some of me left there. So that's, that was a neat thing. You know, having, uh, having some input, getting that, and then that way, having it nice and arranged uh, for the next person to, to carry on and, and do things differently, but having a nice open library. So that's, I'm glad Jenny's got the position where she's at. So she's, a, she's a good one. She's a workaholic, you know, sometimes. And I did this too, because I come in early, I leave late, because, I, you know, I gotta get things done. I, along with Jenny, don't have a prep period. There's just a little bit of a break here, a little bit of a break there. We didn't get a full period like their classroom teachers. Uh, so we just had to manage. You know, we just do things before school and after school. Of course, I had extended time. And of course, they didn't give her extended time. They cut that out. So maybe my next thing is to run for school. Yeah, I'll get, make sure that she gets time back. There you go. I consider that. Yeah. But we do have a good school board too. There's there's some really good school board members. So, did you live here in Portsmouth? I live in Sayreville, actually. Do you? I was supposed to go to East, but I didn't. Um, my where you grew up? Uh, well, when I uh, when I went to when I grew up and was going to school, my oh my goodness, I was like the fourth generation Minford because mm -hmm. we keep all the pictures, you know, and the members will keep all the pictures. Yes. And I could go through while I was waiting for lunch. I would pass by and I say, "Oh, there's my dad." There's my grandpa. Yeah. There's my great grandma. That, that was some of those schools. At East did that too, and you know when they closed that down, uh, I think they have them back there because I don't think the city schools took those because I thought they didn't have any right to do that anyway when they closed it down. But I'm thinking those pictures are still up there. But I now, thought that's really neat. Now is the you mentioned East closing? Is the high school? Did they reopen it or? Yes, during that summer. See what had happened okay. was. See, and this was a controversial situation because see, in 1995, I was on a strategic planning committee which brought you know, community members, school board members, staff, administration, all together you know, to focus on the future. This is back in 1995. And you know, 
the big question with our committee was, do we keep two high schools? You know, a lot of people said, well, we don't like the duplication of services. Money being funneled down from the state is getting thinner. Um, so, but in my, my personal thinking, because I was at PHS and I was at East and I had a lot of kids from those schools, that, well, which one did you like better? They were both unique. Great kids down here, kind of a country type setting at East, and I loved it. I loved it. The first, my first year up there was in '92, and I went out there. I was I was invited out to meet the team night out at Allard Park. I went out there. And it was like a football game playoff. That place was packed. And the community. They, you know, and I thought this is great. You know, but see, the school was the community. And people in Portsmouth proper was, didn't know anything about that school, you know? I was at PHS, got a lot of new stuff there. When I went to East, but it wasn't just East, there was other schools too, but you know, being from Sodaville and going there, they, only, they thought they were the stepchild. And in some respects, they were. Uh, but I was, while I was there, I was able to get new furniture for the library, got carpet, got it painted, even got it air conditioned. I, you believe that? Well, I had a supportive principal too, and so that was the only library in the district that was air conditioned. I loved it. Got more people coming in. <laughs> had, a, had a great staff. It just the, the, the staff was very very good. But then we had some change in leadership at the, as a superintendent and some school board members, and then all of this thing. All of a sudden, it was look, we need to close the school. You know, it's, it's costing us more money. But I remember, this was back close to 2000, but I thought, 1995, you know, we all agreed on that strategic planning committee. There was one board member that would not agree, but they, she would agree on this. She would agree for, on two high schools if one of them was prep, college prep, PHS, and then career oriented for East. Because, you know, she said that the thing with duplication of services was a big stickler in her mind. And I can understand that to a certain point, but with our community, because I was a visionary in a way, I could think, okay, we need to have, we need to let's keep a high school there. We need to keep it there. We need to keep Portsmouth City there. You know, we, if we, we needed to, so, to have supported it, even if we needed to sacrifice, have a K-12 facility on that end instead of a K-6, what we've got now. It should have been K-12, but there was just a few people, powers to be, that would keep that in such a turmoil. You know, we should have either had a K-12, my, this is just my view, and a lot of people disagree with it, we should have had a K-12 or nothing up there. Because see, it started keeping, started creating some situation. Am I still being taken? Ah! Uh -huh. <laughs> it created another situation. We kept the elementary up there, but we were a feeder school to the community school. And then they were going to make those kids Trojans. I said, no, you don't do that. We're a feeder school. That's Tartans. They're Tartans. They're Tartans here, even though this is a Portsmouth City School. It took a couple of years to get that changed a little bit because of, we're going to feed it. And that was the beauty of me being on both ends because I got to see the big picture. You know, some people up there didn't want to have anything to do with people down here and vice versa down here. And I thought, people, where are the kids? We're here for the kids. You know, let's sacrifice for the kids. Because a K-12 facility would have healed some wounds up there. And, and then just thinking back then, how things could have expanded out there in the Sodaville, Memphis, Wittersburg area, businesses, things like that could, you know, then we would draw, be a drawing card at that school. We, if we did have that, I could foresee New Boston still being in their own schools because they would, you know, we got, they got a lot of open enrollment kids from Portsmouth. If we took them out, they would hard, they would shrink. But, you know, if they would have put a K-12 facility up there, I guarantee New Boston wouldn't have got new facilities. And see, this was another thing. What they, what could have been done, uh, and of course everybody's territorial. I could, I could see 
in Boston, Clay, and East merging together. I mean, it's just the thought, and I knew it wasn't going to happen because everybody's territorial, and they want their spike. Where are you going to put the school? You know, and that would have been a big. But I could, I'm looking over beyond that. It could have been a really nice school district. It really would have been powerful. But of course, it didn't happen, and I didn't think I'd ever see uh, New Boston get new schools. I really didn't. Clay, I never. I thought I'd never see that, and it happened. And I thought. You know, look how many schools in this county. Then you go across the river, how many schools over there in, in Greenup, you know? But my time at East was very productive. I loved it. I wish I could have retired there. I wish I could. The kids were great. Kids were great. Nice community. Um, at one time, my parents lived in Soteville before I was born. <laughs> but I, I miss those days because of the, of the kids. I still are in contact with a lot of former students from there particularly Facebook and all, but, uh, but yeah, those were, those were good years. I had, a, I had a good career in Portsmouth City Schools, and I thought, I still in some way want to be a part of it. And that's why I like the archives and just trying to get the history, a little bit of the history of our school district. Uh, and that's what, I'm working on an article next month for the Soda Voice. There's one person, uh, there's only one of our schools that was named after a local individual. George D. Scudder, the old Scudder School down on 4th and Gordon. And to see that guy's life and to read about what, how he contributed to the community and the way that that part of town really liked him, you know, naming a school after him, whoa, well, this guy was very unique. Even a lawyer, he was a lawyer. <laughs> I'm trying to trace down. I'm, I know where he was living. He was living on the corner of Fourth and Washington. And then when he had passed away, they had like his uh, viewing in the home. And they let out school early for all the kids to come and see him for one last time. And I thought, wow. And I was trying, is that house still there? Of course it's not. There's a white wall around. There it used to be right there on that corner back in the early 20s when things have changed. But and that house is not there, but I thought, here, he, he just lived a block from the school. And a real interesting person. Of course, all the other, most of the other buildings were after presidents. Uh, Lindsay School was named after an early pioneer years before, you know, and it's up to the school board how they're, how they're named and all. But it's neat. Grant McKinley, Harding, Wilson, you know, this, and then you got Scudder. Who's Scudder? You know, the one little saying, Scudder, Scudder, in the gutter, eating dirty peanut butter. That was an old say, childhood saying. I didn't go to Scudder, but I picked that up. And I thought, uh, this is kind of neat. But, uh, yeah, just to, I want to continue working in archives as long as I can. And just share some of this stuff. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of neat. As you know, they're at Garfield School, I'll share this and I'll, I'll conclude this. You got this on tape so you can play it back over and over and over again. But there was uh, uh, Herman the Meat Market. It used to be across the street from Garfield. And that's where they just tore all of those buildings down. Well, Herman's Meat was just right close there. And back in the early days, they had a party line. You know, people, you pick up, you want to call somebody, well, somebody's on it, so you listen in. You're, you got to hang up. <laughs> well, there was somebody that called and uh, somehow it got to the school <clears throat> and the principal picked it up and said, uh, hello, you know, he said, you got any brains down there? And of course the principal replied, well, I, I kind of think we do have some brains here, you know, being a school and all, and they were wanting the Hermit Meats. <laughs> I thought that was a humorous story that, that I found in one of the pamphlets of the school. So, see, it's neat to find things like that. It's just kind of interesting. That's what I like to come down in that history department quite a bit. So, um, the Sixth Street School. I thought it was up on Campbell Avenue. I thought it was just the Wilson School because when I was started work, was working on this. Car calendar and
trying to highlight a different school each month, and I couldn't find the Sixth Street School. And I thought, where is this school at? Well, I found it on that map. When you go in that little short hallway back to your office, I was just standing there one day looking, and I thought, well, I knew where the old high school was, but then there it was right, right above it. It's right there in the left field of our current ball field today. And see, that was another neat thing because, see, that property was owned by the city schools and then Selby's, some years later, Selby's was built, torn down, and then we got it back. It's kind of neat. We had the property, sold it, we got it back. I mean, little things like that, it's just kind of, it's kind of unique.